when you work at a theme park, your department doesn't socialize or talk to others much. Or it does. Or, well, y you know, it varies. <laughs> I get asked a lot, how often did we talk to people in other departments or other areas and how many times did we get to know them? And the honest answer is, it depends. It really varied depending upon where I was working and what I was doing. It varied from park to park and the easiest way to kind of explain how the relationships worked was to start off at the beginning, which was Bush Gardens. Bush Gardens at Rhino Rally, our ride was basically at a dead end spur in the middle of the park. We weren't near other rides, we weren't near restaurants, we weren't really near anything. There was a little snack stand that was down near the entrance to our dead end spur and that was it. We really were kind of on our own. We joked that we were the forgotten stepchild because really we weren't near anything else and nobody else knew who we were and outside of a rare visit from the area manager we really were kind of on our own. We had our own break room with our own facilities. Generally it was easier to break there because if you only had a 30 minute break and it took you 5 to 10 minutes to walk back and forth to each other big break room with the cafeterias, it wasn't worth going. So we kind of stuck to ourselves. The only radios we had for communication were in our Land Rovers, and they just let us communicate within our ride circle. Radios to talk to the rest of the park, the operations and attractions and stuff, only the supervisors had those. None of the rest of us did. So we really didn't have any idea what was happening in the rest of the park, unless there was something major and our supervisor let us know. But we really were just kind of on our own. So we didn't talk to anybody else, we didn't know anybody else, we just stayed in our circle. So did I really know anybody else at Busch Gardens? Not really. Even the other ride I was trained on, which was the Mouse Coaster, and it was just basic training, I still really didn't know anybody there because I only worked on it twice in two years. Now at Disney, it was a bit different. As photographers, we had our assigned park, but you could be rotating in all sorts of different places within that park in different areas. So you would know your photographers in the park for the most part. You knew the people who worked in the same division and depending upon what you were doing, you were likely to break at the same time. In particular, uh, at Hollywood Studios and at Magic Kingdom, you would take a break during parade time. Everybody shut down during the parade because the parade was where you would take pictures and so you would go take a break at that point with your other photographers. So photographers knew each other at Disney and even bouncing around from park to park. Because photographers would move occasionally, you would still generally know some people at the other parks as well. So I was never at a park where I didn't know somebody. They were just usually photographers. We, again, did not take pictures of attractions. In fact, even on the ride cameras, it generally was merchandise that took care of those because merchandise was the only ones who could actually take money. As photographers, we weren't allowed to. So even at the places where we sold pictures, we would have to wait for merchandise people to actually bring up the pictures we sold. And they were a few that we did know outside our department. If we worked in what we called The View, which is the store where we sold the pictures, we would get to know the merchandise people there if they were there on a regular basis and we were there on a regular basis. So you could get to know a small handful of merch people. But we didn't work with rides, we didn't work with foods, we didn't work with all the other departments, and so we really didn't get to know them. There were a few exceptions. I do remember at a couple parks I did get to know a couple of the custodial crew simply because I tended to work one area on a regular basis and they were working the same area. And so we would cross paths and so we kind of got to know each other at least on a hey how you doing kind of basis. Not much more than that. And then when I was at Magic Kingdom I was what was called a Magic Moments photographer a lot. I took pictures of the parades, the marching bands that were in the parades, the Grand Marshals, and things like that. And so I did get to know some of the people who ran the parades. Some of the suits, and I don't remember exactly which department they were with other than they were affiliated with City Hall, but they were the people who would clear the parade routes, put up the ropes, and things like that. I did get to know some of them because of working those routes. And in fact, I actually did extra and I went in for an extra day and got parade route training 
just crowd control, basically. So I did know a few of them with that because I had a better idea how to help keep the crowds under control during parade times, which they liked. And then also as magic moments, we would also shoot the flag retreat. So again, I got to know a couple people there that I saw on a regular basis. The only security guys I knew at all were ones that did the flag retreat ceremony all the time. And so I would see them often enough that I kind of got to know them a little bit from talking, okay, who's going to be our veteran of the day? Anything I need to be aware of as I get ready to shoot and got used to the routine. Three security people on a regular basis, and I knew two of them. Uh, so <laughs> that was about it there. And then a couple of performers in the parade who also helped with extras and things. So I did know a couple that way. So a handful of people that were involved with parades and stuff like that. The one real exception at Disney was entertainment. Because as photographers, we worked with the characters on a regular basis. We did get to know the characters as well as the attendants. So that was really the one place that we really kind of went outside our department because of who we were working with and what we were doing. We got to know our characters pretty well, especially if we were there regularly. Well enough that even 10 years later, I'm still actually friends with several of my old characters, including the very first character I ever, ever worked with. I am actually still friends with them, and it's been really kind of neat watching them over the years get married and have kids and stuff like that, and I don't know if they realized that they were actually the very first I worked with. But there are a handful that, years later, I am still friends with there. There are character attendants that we would get to know, Again, because they're kind of watching the line and supervising stuff, and we would help them, and they would help us. And if we were in a spot on a regular basis, we would get to know them. So attendants that I worked with at Toontown and Character Spot, when I was in China on a regular basis at Epcot and taking pictures of Mulan, those attendants... I got to know pretty well. And if I was in the park on a day I wasn't working, oh, hey, how you doing? They would be the ones that we would know. Characters and character attendants. In fact, we worked so closely with entertainment that actually after two, three years of being there, entertainment actually kind of swallowed PhotoPass and merged with them. And we actually became a subdivision of entertainment. That's how close we worked. So that was really the one exception there. Silver Dollar City, on the other hand, was a very different kind of thing. See, Walt Disney World, we had 55,000 to 60,000 cast members working. Think about that. That's a small city's worth of people. Where I live right now, and I'm not exaggerating this, there was 40 times more cast members at Disney than there are people living in the town I live in now. Yeah, it's a small town. But I still don't know everybody here even. Way too many people to know. And I went from that to Silver Dollar City, where it's so much smaller that really most employees who want to know other people do. We would eat breakfast on a regular basis, and I would eat breakfast with people on my train crew, as well as ride attendants, entertainment, gate entry people, ride operators, and we would all mix and match together. Because the train is kind of the center of the park. We got to know people who worked our snack bar in the train station. We got to know people who worked at the stores just up the hill from us. We knew the people who worked the rides next to us and below us because we'd have to interact with them on a regular basis. Riding the train through the park and you had a spiel kind going, we would interact with shopkeepers that were along the way and other entertainers along the way. And so really, we got to know a lot of people there. Additionally, with the train, we were a smaller crew, but we had radios that were constantly in touch with everybody that worked in the park on rides and attractions. So we knew who was on the radios because you wanted to have an idea who that was talking to you and if they were legitimate or not. So we were constantly in touch and aware of who it was that we were talking to on the radio. Additionally, because we had a store when I first started attached to the train station, we knew the gentleman who was there most of the time and the merchandise manager would actually come by on a regular basis so we knew the merchandise people that way as well as eating breakfast with them and again there's another one annie was one of the merchandise supervisors that we got to know on a regular basis always had a good friendly greeting and it's been neat to watch her get married and neat story there so silver dollar city one of the things that they would tell you in orientation is you're about to become part of a family if you're willing. And really, in three years of being there, 
you do. You become part of a family. They, You see them as much as your own family. You work with them, and so you really do get to know people from all over. So we knew the people in charge of security and were able to call them easily on a first name basis. We knew all the first aid people because we had to pick up our AED machines and talk to them and make sure we were certified. So we regularly worked with them. We knew the custodial people because they would help us clean the station. And if we had a biological incident, they were the ones that came down and helped us, which was huge. So we really did know people from all over the park. And it was it was such a neat thing that you know, to go from a park like Bush Gardens where nobody knew you, you didn't know anybody, to going to Disney and branching out and really kind of feeling like, hey, I've got access to all of these parks, to going to Silver Dollar City where you really felt like you knew somebody everywhere in the park. You couldn't go any place without knowing somebody and them knowing you, especially when you were a loudmouth conductor like me. <laughs> and it made it really kind of neat because you would have access and abilities to find out information that you didn't otherwise. You really felt like you were part of the whole entire park. That was just really kind of a cool thing. So it varies. It's different from park to park. If you work in other chains and other parks, you're going to find it varies from park to park and company to company. When I'm asked, you know, hey, did you know people in all these divisions? Well, sometimes, many times not, but depends upon where it was and what I was doing. If you've worked at a park, I'd love to know. Were your experiences similar? What did you have? I would love to hear your experiences and stories as well. Please share them in the comments below. I want to thank you as well for liking the video, subscribing if you haven't already. I mean, what are you waiting for? And sharing the video as well. Don't forget to check the description. There's a ton of info there. I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons, my YouTube members, and my brand new patron, Mallory LeBlanc. Thank you so much for signing on, and thank you so much for watching. God bless. So yeah, it, did I know anybody else at Rhino? <laughs> okay, that's blah, blah, blah. the one real exception at Silver at Silver Dollar City. No, I'm still at Disney. As well as what they were saying and why my phone was ringing right now. I will answer that one later. Hey, bro. <laughs> it, it's my brother-in-law. Uh, if you work at other parks, like Silver Dollar... Uh, uh, I'd, I'd love to hear your side of the story. Including about how to support... Including about... Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to know about contact information, fan pages, merchandise, and more, please be sure to check the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to know when I have new ones, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button right up there. And if you want to see another one of my videos, well, I've got a great one for you right here. And a huge thank you to these wonderful people here who support me on Patreon and with YouTube memberships. They get behind-the-scenes information, special perks, and more. If you'd like to know more about that, well, make sure you check that button right there. Thank you so much.